Welcome to my introduction to networking course, also known as ITN. This is the version 7 material preparing learners for the Cisco CCNA 200-301. Cisco curriculum, everything is owned and copyrighted by them. Module 8, the network layer. And what we're going to be doing in this layer is talking about IP packets and about routing. So IP packets come in both IPv4 and IPv6. And we're going to be talking about how the router makes decisions on path selection. That's essentially what routing is. So what are some of the basic characteristics of the network layer? Well, this is where we take a segment from layer four and we encapsulate it into a packet. The four major areas that the network layer performs is the addressing for source and destination, the destination being an external address outside of our LAN, encapsulation and decapsulation, and lastly, routing. And again, routing is just a clever way of saying path selection or path determination from our source to our destination outside of our LAN. So why IPv4 and IPv6? What happened to IPv5? IPv5 did not take off. It was a giant flop, so it just isn't discussed anymore. But there is a version 5 out there that doesn't run, doesn't work. So 4 and 6 are the primary IP versions. So let's talk about encapsulation. So again, a segment from layer four, the transport layer, will become the data for our packets. Our packet will then put on our IP header. Keep in mind, if we're doing any type of uh, address translation, NAT, uh, the destination and source addressing may be slightly different, but the IP headers where source and destination address information will be going. Characteristics of IP in both versions is it's connectionless, it's best effort, and it doesn't care what layer two technology you're using. So it doesn't matter if you're using ethernet or a frame relay or any other form of layer one or layer two uh, connectivity. All it cares is that it knows to dump the IP packet into a frame and it's a layer two issue from there. So connection list, what does that mean? Connection list is basically best effort. No establishment, it just sends the packets. If you get it, great. If you don't, oh well. If you don't get it, I don't get a notification that it wasn't received. So again, best effort effort. As data flows through a network, some packets may get lost. That's okay. Again, best effort means no acknowledgement. It will recover the best it can and just kind of move forward. So what does it mean by media independent or layer two independent? It doesn't mean that it has to use the same media across the network. Again, it can use different type of layer two technologies for transporting of data. It can use different layer one technologies for the actual physical connections. It does not matter. Layer three, as it takes the packet, will give the packet to a frame, and the frame deals with the connectivity from there. IP packets don't care how they get there, that's not its role. So another part of the media independent is layer two will actually have a maximum transmission unit, MTU, and basically the frame knows what size it should be, and so does the packets. So the packet may chunk itself up before it goes down to layer two, thus allowing 
the network layer to chunk up its size as opposed to the frame por uh, layer, data link layer, chunking down its size. Oftentimes the network will establish the appropriate MTU size so that all media throughout the network is using the same size. And realistically, 1500-ish bytes is the standard MPU size. Though it could be slightly bigger, slightly smaller, but normally MTU by default is about 1500 bytes. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the individual IPv4 packets because we have to talk about each packet type. They are slightly different, so we have to address them differently. IPv4 is the primary communication standard still used in the US. Basically, it provides the header, the structure of how a IPv4 packet will be uh, sent, how it will be organized. This allows for standard communication, meaning it's going to the correct destination. It knows how to process certain uh, packets. Is the packet actually going to the right location with the right priority? Things of that nature. All of this is stored in that layer three data frame. Or, I'm sorry, that layer three header before it's to get packaged into a data frame. So what does a PyPv4 packet header look like? Here it is. First things you'll notice is a version number then some type of header length, then some type of priority, then a total length for the entire packet. We have an identification, some flags, some uh, time to live, a header checksum to make sure the header is correct. We have a source and destination address as well. So again, here we're looking at things like the version, the protocols, time to live, source and destination addresses. They're the big ones. So the version is going to be what version of IPv that you're running. Is it version four or version six? See, the funny part is the second one is the differential services. That is prioritization, QoS. Check some, basically make sure that the header is not corrupted. TTL or time to live, basically between each hop, the TTL will be decremented by one thus making sure that packets don't live forever. They can only jump between so many layer three networks before the packet is discarded. The protocol being what is the higher layer protocol? What is the layer of the layer four protocol? Is it TCP, is it UDP, so forth. And then source and destination address will be the appropriate IPv4 address for the source and then the destination being the location of where it's going. And that is this chapter in a nutshell. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out.